How's it going, everybody? It's been a while since I've done any kind of video, so I thought, you know what? I'm going to change the formula of what I do just a little bit. Add something a little unique. I'm going to answer today a favorite question that's asked repeatedly on forums, groups, and will this fit my Honda? I mean, Volkswagen. Volkswagen. I meant Volkswagen. And today it's going to be my. Will this fit my GTI? Um, I suppose it's not really a GTI, is it? But that is. That is. This is. That all is. That is. That is. That is. Okay, it's a fake GTI. Shut the fuck up, you cunt! This is technically my full converted Lupo 1 litre shell. Nobody with cares. full donor car from the Polo 6M2 GTI. It's a GTI completely. Inside, underneath, everything is all GTI. It just doesn't look like it. I have the alley bonnet. So that'll be painted to look somewhat nice, maybe, one day. I'm hoping to source a pair of aluminium doors. Today's project is can you make a GTI bumper fit a non-GTI shell without cutting and welding? Most people will just tell you not to bother. And I'd be one of them who would say, ain't worth the time. But I'm going to give it a go and show you guys how to do it along the way. So I'm going to put you down while I rip this front end off and we'll roll through it. So this is the point where I come clean. I've already technically had this GTI bumper on uh, once already. I'm going to take this moment just to go through um, the main differences. You need the crash bar. This crash bar is specifically for GTI. It's narrower, shorter, and a hell of a lot lighter. Also specifically it has that mounting bracket there. That's crucial. This is the one liter support bar for the bumper. You don't need this, this can go which it will be coming off very shortly. These are useless, these mounting brackets. I will be binning these off in a moment. The next part that you'll be seeing in a moment is me offering the bumper up. But before I do that, I'll show you the GTI specific bumper support and why you need it. Now, this piece is needed for the GTI bumper. This is your top bumper support. So the original one was the part of the cross. You get rid of that, replace it with this. These are your new bumper supports. So the bumper slides over these, locks into place, and holds it on the sides. No more broken clips. Well, I say that, but to repair this. In terms of the sides of the bumper, the GTI it screws in in two points there and there. Obviously, it doesn't on non GTIs, it clips in on some stupid plastic clips that you can only get from Latvia. The other thing with the GTI bumper is it comes down like this and then radiuses but it also comes up higher. So I think it's around there. Obviously that all has to be remedied which I'll show you in a moment. This bracket would have originally been here. That needs to be removed. It literally just pops off. It's plastic welded but the welds are not particularly strong so screwdriver off it comes. Alright, so here we are with the bumper mounted. It's loosely thrown on at the moment, so the bolts not in down the bottom there or in the top here. They haven't screwed in corners. We use this side as an example of what I've done. So tape straight edge down, and then it gives you a rough idea then of the line that you need to cut. In terms of this line, unfortunately 
it is mostly guess and cut, which I know is not ideal. Now the natural bumper line wants to sit there, but you can fix that with heat. So that's not really a deal breaker. I've gone a little bit extra with my particular install and I've actually put this top lip back in. This is all plastic welded and backfilled. So it's in what I feel like is the correct place. And then I've also gone in and added material on the inside there so that I can put their metal nut thing back inside there and then here as well to secure it here in the position I want it to be in. I did, as I was doing this, come up with a method of measuring, but I didn't discover this until after uh, I'd already started cutting. And basically from this seam here to there, if you measure your stock bumper from the top to that seam, you can somewhat replicate the line that you need and it gives you a rough idea. If you start, if you knock off a couple of mils or whatever, it will give you a rough idea of how much then you need to skim it down by afterwards. In regards to these corner brackets, I don't know where these are supposed to sit because they're different on GTI versus non-GTI. So I've plastic welded the original holes, filled them up because I'm going to put new ones in but I want them to be in the original location, if possible. From a guide that I found on the internet, he just shoved self-tappers through this into the wing after bonding these, uh, on bonding the brackets back onto the bumper. I don't want to bond the bumper back together yet until I know the final position for these. So what I'm going to do quite simply is just clamp the bumper bracket in here in the original location which is up against the arch liner trim and then lock that in place and then just see if I can locate the screw holes on here and poke something sharp through the back side and mark it out. Then I know where the hole naturally is. I now know why he said we need to drill new holes. Simple answer is, I don't know how well you can see that, if you can at all, but basically the location that this needs to sit in for it to line up is in the wrong place for the holes. So those holes that I filled up I'm going to have to re-drill and drill new holes for these and then so the holes there I'm gonna have to re-drill and then I'll, sh I'll shape out for the plugs so it fits. So it's a new day and two days has actually passed since the last time I put the camera up and I've bonded the brackets to the bumper now so they're in there final position. So I've used clamps to obviously hold it in place, tiger seal the back side and bonded this back in. It's the other side. And I've also used the tiger seal across the top here to hold that top completely in place. The next stage of this operation is to finalise the position for the brackets. Here, obviously I need to take these out which just pop. Once I've got these brackets on, I've got the bumper in its final position, I can then look at this piece here because I think this is going to have to be flared out slightly so it's squared with the rest of the arch. I think that's going to be hammer and dolly and a little bit of time but if I can get that to poke out then I don't need to heat and push the bumper as far in then it should all line up quite nicely. The only thing I have got to do is these are reproduction wings. This just needs flattening out just a touch, just so it sits better against that. So anyone who buys reproduction front wings 
you're probably going to have to do the same thing. Doesn't look like it's an issue with OEM wings, but these are just cheap masters. Just thought I'd show you how I've done it. So these three holes here, the new ones that I've drilled and shaped out. And then the plastic nut certs from here will just transfer into these holes and mount the bumper. Mount the bracket now in its new position. I uh, had to square the holes up so I could put the plastic uh, nut certs in. So it's literally fixed as if it was a uh, factory. And that should be that in terms of final mounting of the bumper. The only thing that I need to address next, which I'll show you in a second. This is the bumper installed on the car. Now the issue I've got now is that top lip there obviously needs to meet the rest of the car. And then that little bit there, which again, I think this loops back into the reproduction uh, wings not being very good quality. I think I literally just need to hulk out on it, bend it into the right place. And I'll be honest, this bumper is mounted as it should be. This side's a little bit worse. Well, I suppose it's not once everything's in the right place. I need to blank them out, which I've already templated. And then the eventual plan for those is I'm going to 3D print some aero ducts with an LED ring, and then that will be my new indicators. Uh, I have the fog light already scanned. Toe eye covers can be bought on eBay already 3D printed. I don't really want to spend that kind of money. I think the guy wants £90 for a pair. I think I'd rather not put that kind of cash into a 3D printed part. I have scanned these pockets myself, so I'll have a look at trying to draw my own up and see how that goes. Probably not very well. There is two bolts in the bottom here that you'll need to put in and that puts the bumper in position as well. One bolt up here, one in the middle and one there. This locates the bumper and then these bolts up here would hold the fog light. Final check on everything. So checking on alignment, just put the two bottom bolts in. And I think that's a job well done. So overall I think that's it for the guide on how to mount the bumper. Hopefully this helps somebody other than myself again in a few years time or whenever I decide to pop around with another one. I'm quite happy with the finished product and I definitely don't think I could mount it any more sturdier if I'm honest. Thanks for watching. I'm not sure what I'll do on the next video other than maybe talk a little bit more about the car and if anyone knows any decent body shops who can respray a car maybe let me know because I think that's next on the cards for this thing. It's uh, got a few too many colours going on. Take it easy everyone.